Hey guys, this is Phil. Thanks for checking out my Light Jockey tutorial, available exclusively here at LightJockeyTutorial.com. Um, the first couple lessons are going to be available streaming for free, uh, so you can get an idea of what the program's all about and get an idea of what the course is going to be like. Uh, of course, the full course will be available for sale on the website as well, in DVD format, uh, as well as digital download format if you'd prefer to get it that way as well. Uh, Light Jockey is a program that was created by Martin to basically replace the Hardwork DMX controller, uh, like a light board or other type of DMX controller. Um, what they've done is taken that controller and put it into a nice neat package uh, living in your computer. Um, as you can see, the program is basically a piece of software here, um, as well as there is also a piece of hardware that goes along with it, an interface that is going to plug into your USB port on your computer and convert that uh, USB data to DMX data. Um, you can run the program uh, without the interface. If you have not picked up the interface yet, you can go ahead and download the Light Jockey program from the Martin website so that you can follow along with the tutorial. However, you won't be able to control any of your lights until you actually get that interface. Um, we'll also talk, of course, about how to get that interface all set up. Um, just as a little uh, point of reference, DMX is uh, just the language that is used um, for lighting in different DMX capable devices to communicate with each other. As we go through the tutorial, you start to see how that DMX uh, protocol actually works. Um, just a couple terms you should know before we start. Uh, when I refer to fixtures, I'm talking about lights or smoke machines or hazers, any DMX device, as well as those static fixtures too. Um, I'll also be referring to addresses. Addresses are simply numbers that are assigned to the different lights and fixtures so that uh, the computer knows where to send data to. Uh, we'll also be talking about sequences and cues. Uh, a sequence is a group of scenes or snapshots um, from the program that you've created. Uh, and a cue is just a stack of those sequences. In other words, uh, a bunch of sequences placed together to create some kind of a moving pattern or even a static pattern or something of that nature. Um, again, if it's a little confusing to you if you've never programmed lights before, uh, when we get into the chapter of this DVD about programming, uh, it'll definitely make sense to you then. Uh, a small overview of just basically what we're going to be talking about. We're going to start right from the basics, which is setting up light jockey and getting uh, the drivers set up as well. Very important that you use the, the correct drivers. Um, light jockey out of the box is a Windows based program. I'm running on a Windows computer. Um, however, I have seen the program run successfully in boot camp on Apple computers. Uh, we're not going to talk about that too much though in this tutorial. Um, we'll move then into fixture setup, getting your uh, fixtures or your items placed into Light Jockey so that you can start sending the data to them. Um, I'm popping up a little fixture configuration window that you're going to be using quite often to address and set up your fixtures. Um, like I said before, you can place in those intelli intelligent fixtures and all those DMX capable lights and smoke machines and hazers. Um, however, there are ways for you to stick static fixtures or non-DMX fixtures uh, and have it function through this program. And we're going to talk a little bit about that as well when we go ahead and get into that section of the tutorial. Um, we're also going to talk about um, the different functions that exist within Light Jockey, like the toolbar up across the top here. There's a whole bunch of different options that we're going to talk about. Um, as well as the fixture control windows, which you can see when I click a fixture, it pops up a group of windows. Uh, these include things like intensity, beam, position, effects, colors, gobos. Um, depending on the fixture that you're activating, uh, it's obviously going to only pop the appropriate windows, i.e. with a moving fixture, it will pop uh, X, Y axis for you. And with something like a strobe, it's only going to obviously give you a shutter and intensity and a strobe rate. Um, the different profiles that exist within Light Jockey, um, that you may have seen when I pulled up the fixture configuration window there are going to control which windows pop. Um, most of the lights that are out there already have um, a specific profile made for them. If not, um, there is a slew of generic profiles available in here that work with most of the lights on the market if there's not one specifically made for them. And you can also create your own profiles as well if you need to, although I found that that's pretty rare at this point. Um, we're going to also go over general functions of the fixtures and the control interfaces, um, things like using um, a pre-programmed uh, effects that live inside the lights, uh, things like um, you know our effects macros and animations and things of that nature. We're also going to talk about position macros, which is a really cool feature within Light Jockey that will actually allow you to take a pre-made uh, baser shape or position and uh, modify it to your own 
uh, specifications so that you can have the light doing uh, some pre-programmed movements right out of the box without really having to do too much uh, programming yourself. Uh, we'll talk about how to modify and tweak that movement macro as well as how to make your own uh, movement patterns, of course, if you want to make your own movement patterns. We're also going to talk about the LED effects that are built into the program as well. If you're using any LED fixtures um, or if you're using uh, any you know, LED uplights or RGB uplights. Um, we're going to, of course, talk about uh, creating scenes, sequences, and cues uh, in the programming chapter. That's going to take up a lot of the uh, tutorials, that programming aspect. Um, after we get through the basics of how to create those scene sequences and cues and use them, um, we're going to talk about some general light programming, things like linking scenes into sequences, um, using scene times and fade times uh, to have our sequences do what we want them to do, as well as stacking sequences into cues and how the priority system works and what we need to know about as far as stacking sequences into those cues. We'll then move into advanced programming theory where we'll talk a little bit about color theory and how to use color effectively. We're also going to talk about how to use these master and group faders down here and as well as how to set up the individual groups and place the fixtures that you want in the groups that you want them. Um, we'll also talk about recycling uh, sequences into new cues. Uh, as you can see here, I have a load of sequences that I've saved, and a lot of them cannot really be recycled, but there are a lot of sequences, like, for example, some LED sequences and um, some different strobe patterns that I like that I can recycle into cues. And it's actually a nice way of changing up and giving some variety to your cues without really having to program every single cue from the ground up. Uh, we're also going to talk about hotkeys and how to use them effectively. Uh, hotkey is just a, a key or a group of keys on the keyboard that you can use to cue uh, certain functions within the program. Um, as you can see here, there is a window that allows you to set those functions to the different hotkeys. So that's something that you can use uh, very effectively, especially in a live situation where you want to make quick modifications like maybe uh, blacking out and coming back in or something of that nature. Um, we'll also talk about some tips and tricks, including creating background cues, or a cue that was going to run uh, when you have no other cues selected. We'll also talk about creating ambience, uh, and creating a mood with lighting, which is something, of course, very important. Uh, we're also going to talk a little bit about effective lighting for DJs, bands, and stage production. Um, obviously, three very different arenas, and of course, they require three very different perspectives when programming, so we're going to talk a little bit about that. Uh, we're also going to talk about the follow spot uh, function. Um, using a, a, a moving head fixture as a follow spot. Um, I found that it's become very common nowadays, especially with moving head fixtures becoming more and more common, that uh, it's really just not as cost effective to, uh, especially on a mobile operation, send out a, a, you know, a follow spot guy with a follow spot just to go ahead and run that one spot when you can really just have your light programmer who's running your moving heads um, do all your follow spotting for you. And Light Jockey has built in a feature called Follow Spot that you can use to uh, pull that up quickly and use it. So we'll talk a little bit about how to use that. Um, we're also going to talk about my two personal favorite features of the Light Jockey software. Uh, the audio input and how to use the audio input effectively for beat matching. Uh, as you can see, my voice is actually coming in right now and uh, triggering this little blue trigger right here. Um, which if you ever worked with a light that has an audio trigger on it, you'll know a little bit about how that function works. Um, the nice thing with the in internal light jockey audio input is that you have very fine control, including an EQ and a threshold control to really create the trigger uh, customized exactly the way you want it to work. Um, we're also going to talk about uh, using an external MIDI controller or a MIDI device to control light jockey. Um, light jockey does have MIDI capabilities. Um, and I'm going to talk a little bit about how to use, uh, how I've, I've been using my, my Android phone um, and a, uh, a MIDI application for the phone to control and cue different things in Light Jockey. And uh, I've actually had a lot of success with it. Um, having that wireless functionality is really a great feature. Um, as you can see, there's a whole group of functions that you can set to pretty much any MIDI cue that you want to, including master fades and master blackouts and fixture toggles and all different kinds of stuff as well as individual cues um, so we'll talk a little bit about how to set that up 
Um, lastly, we're going to close it out with just some troubleshooting, um, you know, dealing with different issues on the job site first and foremost, so how to deal with an issue of hardware not found or your light jockey hardware not responding. Uh, we'll talk about ways that you can get that up and running quickly and uh, effectively. And we'll also just talk about some basic light troubleshooting, things like uh, lighting or equipment not responding or responding incorrectly, uh, things, or lights or fixtures glitching or tripping out or doing little quirky things that they're maybe not really supposed to be doing. Uh, and how to fix that, as well as uh, having different functions of lights not working, things like having your, uh, your, your lights moving and responding, but having no light coming out of the fixture. Common issues that can pop up and can usually be solved pretty quickly. Uh, so again, I want to thank you for checking out the tutorial, and uh, we're going to go ahead and delve right into the first lesson, which is going to be about light jockey setup and driver installation.